I am one of the best Sudoku players in the world. Literally a Sudoku master. Don't believe me? Well, you'll have to watch on to see how it happened. My name is Groudon and I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order to find the hidden gems among the piles of garbage, and today's game is One Rule Sudoku. Let's begin. According to Malcolm Gladwell's rule, you need to spend at least 10,000 hours deliberately practicing something in order to potentially be considered world class. There's obviously a lot of debate around this, as of course the time required will vary depending on what you are trying to master. For example, learning how to perform the perfect bottle flip will take significantly less time than, say, becoming a world class rally driver. But what if I told you that by finding the right niche, by playing the right game, you could master something in literally an afternoon? Well, in my case it only took a mere 70 minutes for me to become Sudoku Master. That's right, 70 minutes, not 70 weeks, days or even hours, but minutes. And it's all thanks to one of the worst games I've had the misfortune of playing in a while. One Rule Sudoku. So how the heck did this happen? Well. After opening the game for the first time and getting over the crushing disappointment of the UI and options menu, I saw that the game has multiple difficulty levels and grid sizes. Now, importantly, the game does have a how to play section that indeed only lists one rule, so if you're not familiar with Sudoku, it's pretty simple to pick it up and start playing. These rules apply whether you're trying to complete a standard 9x9 grid or one of the smaller 6x6 or 4x4 versions. You can't have the same number appear in the same row, column or box more than once. In addition to this, there are four levels of difficulty available, starting at easy and going all the way up to impossible. So upon seeing this, there was only one thought that was going through my mind. For those familiar with the series, you might recall that my personal goal is not just to play and review the games, but to complete them as well. It doesn't need to be 100% completion, but I need to finish the game. So. Does my series goal mean I need to keep playing until I manage to finish every possible variation of a Sudoku grid? Well, no, that would be stupid and quite frankly, impossible. For anyone wondering, there are a total of 6 sextillion, 670 quintillion, 903 quadrillion, 752 trillion, 21 billion, 72 million, 936,960, or 6.671 times 10 to the power of 21, possible solutions to a standard 9x9 Sudoku grid. Assuming an incredible rate of 1 minute per Sudoku grid completed, that would require 1.27 quadrillion years without breaks to complete. Which is far, far more time than the comparatively measly 13.7 billion years that the universe has existed for. So to bring this back to its original point, the question in my mind was, what the heck is the criteria for beating this game? And that's when I noticed it. Achievements. One Rule Sudoku has Steam achievements for tasks like completing 10 puzzles of each difficulty, and 10 puzzles of each size, and for completing 100 puzzles in total. In fact, that final achievement is literally called Sudoku Master. Couldn't be more perfect. But actually it could, because this game currently has a grand total of zero reviews. Which means I've struck gold, because with so few people having played the game, or having been turned away by the horrendous graphics so early on, some of these achievements have a completion percentage of zero. Meaning I have an opportunity to become the first, the only, the uncontested one rule Sudoku master. And so my journey began. First up, I decided to knock out the 10 easy puzzles and the 10 4x4 puzzles at the same time. Easy puzzles tend to have only 1 to 3 numbers missing, so this was a walk in the park. From here, the next step was to knock out the 6x6 and 9x9 achievements, also on easy difficulty. Because why would I subject myself to harder difficulties on larger grids? Within 10 minutes of starting the first puzzle, I had achieved mastery of all the different grid sizes. Maybe this challenge would be even easier than I thought. Next up was completing 10 puzzles of each difficulty, starting with the intermediate level. Because the achievements don't specify a grid size, you can bet your butt that I'm doing all these challenges on a 4x4 grid. Min-maxing is a lifestyle that chose me. Knocking out that achievement took 3 minutes, so we're looking good so far. On to the hard puzzles. These grids are a bit more challenging, only giving between 4 and 8 numbers, so you've usually got more than 50% of the puzzle blank. Still, not too much of a challenge, as I was done in around 10 minutes. 
Full of confidence, I moved on to the impossible difficulty. I was not prepared. Look at this nonsense. It has two numbers. Two. And this is when I realized two very important things. Firstly, this is a rubbish Sudoku game. You can't highlight squares, you can't pencil in numbers, heck, you can even erase the numbers that the game gives you if you really want to, allowing you to break the entire thing. But more importantly, the second realization was that this might actually be an impossible task. Why? Well, because although there are many ways in which you could complete the grid that abide by the Sudoku rules, the game is coded so that there is only a single correct solution per grid. So even if your solution follows all the rules, it might still be considered wrong by the game's logic. And to make things worse, there are no hints, and it won't tell you which squares are wrong. Heck, some of these grids sometimes start with a single number. Literally impossible. A computer cannot solve it because there are so many possible outcomes. I was honestly expecting a completely blank grid to appear at some point, but no, impossible grids seem to have a minimum of one number and a max of three. So how the hell do you beat this? Well, I'll tell you how. A lot of patience, refreshing the grids over and over until you find one that isn't necessarily solvable, but has fewer possible solutions. Adding to that, you're going to need some luck. But remember, you need to beat not just one of these impossible grids, but 10 of them. It took me nearly an hour, but eventually my mastery of Sudoku paid off, and I overcame the most difficult Sudoku challenge in the game. All that was left was to complete the remaining 40 puzzles required for the mastery achievement, and all of these were done on easy difficulty, with a 4x4 grid, because of course they were. I just wanted to be done with the game at that point. But eventually, my hard work paid off and I was done. I had achieved what no one else had done before. I am a Sudoku master. Technically. If you've watched this far, then you'll realistically know everything there is to know about this game, with two major exceptions that I'll cover shortly. Before that though, you should know that you can play the game and complete all the achievements in around an hour and you'll be doing the entire thing in complete silence, because there is no music and no sound effects, just you and your thoughts, a combination no mere mortal should be forced to endure. And that's why I'm here, to suffer on your behalf, and to go on a one-man crusade against the relentless tide of bottom-of-the-barrel quality Steam games. That, and to make you wonder how you've somehow been entertained enough to watch a roughly 10-minute video about a Sudoku game of all things. If you've made it here, you're obligated to press that like button now. While you're doing that, let me tell you how much the game costs. Because no, it wasn't free, even though it realistically has no right to charge a single dollar for this frankly atrocious experience. This absolutely bare-bones, minimal effort Sudoku game costs a whopping $6.49 Canadian. That's almost five freedom dollars. And to make things worse, because I was suspicious about this game, I had a quick peek at Task Manager once I'd finished. And what do I see? I see it using 10% of my CPU power. Surely it's not doing anything malicious, it's just poorly optimized, right? And I definitely shouldn't be worried about the Microsoft Edge browser that's also open for literally no reason. Normally I would spend some time discussing the ways that this game could be improved or highlighting the things it did well, but when your list of pros only contains it didn't crash, it makes for a pretty bleak situation. So if you excuse me while I run some antivirus software, here's my final rating for one rule Sudoku. Three rules Sudoku out of 10. If you watch the trailer, it shows a pre-release version that actually has more than one rule featured, and that tells you everything you need to know about the care that went into this game. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the end of the video. A massive thank you to all the channel members on screen for supporting the channel, with a special thank you to our two knights of the Holy Grail, Freaky Feline and Loveheart Gonzi. If you'd like to join this gaming crusade, you can check out the membership. You can. You can check out the memberships. You can. You'll also find a link to some channel stats and our Discord too. Lastly, I want to thank you for joining me on this weird gaming adventure through the depths of Steam. And if you made it this far, here's a sneak peek of the next game. And until next time. Take care.